I have nothing to contribute. This is a boring motor tail into the mouth of the Elba River. We're coming up on uh, the anchorage. We're kind of in it, and there's a ship. And I'm waiting to see if, we're, if we need to move or our course is going to miss it. We had a forecast earlier of uh, westerlies uh, 4 to 5, force 4 to 5, and uh, we got light and variable. So we're just kind of motoring on through uh, confused water because the current's changing and just a bumpy, non eventful kind of ride. We are currently riding the uh, current into the Elba River. Uh, we're on a flood tide. And uh, normally, with, a, with uh, no current, we would be doing about 4.8 knots. And right now, as you can see, we're doing 8 knots. It's been creeping up steadily. Oh, 8.1 now. It's getting better. And here's the cruise ship Grand Voyager. From anchor up to security at the dock at Cookshaven was 7 hours of motor sailing. It was a boring grind that allowed us to even take naps on this little passage. Subsequently, there's not a lot of video of this trip. However, this passage can be a whole lot more exciting if not properly planned. There are two things to watch for when sailing from Helgoland into the Elba River. It's the same two things when entering any major river, tide and wind direction. At max ebb, and that's a west setting current on the Elba, it can be up to six knots current against you. So it's very important to leave at low tide at Helgoland to ride the flood into the river. Otherwise, it will be a much longer day. Next, you need to avoid east winds. Even though the prevailing winds are from the west, easterlies do happen. Easterly winds can be big, and if you are on a flood current opposing the east wind, the seas can quickly build up to dangerous proportions. Many ships and boats have been lost on the approach to the Elba over the centuries. So, to summarize, only enter the Elba on a flood tide and no easterly winds. And you too should have a non-event type of crossing like ours.